Alright, good day everyone. This is Jason Santos. And for today, we will be covering salaries, wages, income, and benefits, its definitions and computations in business math. Uh, this is the sixth lecture. I wasn't able to record this in the past. That's why I'm doing it now for the sake of those who are asking for a copy of this. So let's get started. And uh, this is based in MELKS, and uh, this is under the fundamental operations of mathematics as applied in salaries and wages. Uh, you can also check out my other videos where I do an actual computation of the salaries and um, how do you determine the net earnings, uh, putting all the deductions from the gross earnings. So... Here, we will be covering all of these things. And particularly the topic salaries, wages, and benefits. So first, let's define salaries. Now, when you say salaries, these are fixed periodical payments made to persons doing or engaged in manual work, office, and white-collar jobs. Salaries are fixed payments agreed upon by both employer and employee. So a couple of things here. Um, you have the word fixed, okay? And uh, this is periodical, meaning uh, this is being paid regularly uh, for most workers. It's going to be 15th and the 30th. Others, it's going to be uh, the 5th and the 25th. Uh, it depends, right? But uh, bottom line, these are periodical. And um, uh, these are for people engaged in manual work, office, white-collar jobs. And then the salaries are fixed payment, meaning uh, the payment is uh, fixed. There is a base. Um, every month, you will get the same amount unless you have... Um, certain additional deductions that weren't available uh, last month or new incentives or benefits that weren't available last month as well. And this must be agreed upon by both the employer and employee. Now, uh, just to show you an example, because uh, I work in the government as well, and here are some of the salaries that um, are being given to uh, politicians, you have a vice mayor uh, for Component City, a vice mayor for our uh, uh, city, uh, San Jose del Monte, which is now a highly urbanized area. You'll have, you'll have an idea how much the monthly salary is. And um, yeah, from the city mayor up to the president, this is the salary grade. And um, I am also governed by that same salary grading because uh, I am also employed in a university. So basically, there are monthly salaries uh, opposite or accompanied on the salary grade. Okay. It, it, it depends on which salary grade you're pertaining to. That's how it works for the government. But for private companies, there might be some variations in the salaries. Like, for example, you have... Um, a uh, barista who's working for um, a small coffee shop versus a Starbucks or a Figaro or a coffee bean. Um, there might be some variations uh, when it comes to their salary, but ultimately, uh, a business must make sure that their salaries being offered are competitive enough in order for the employees to stay. Now, these salaries are subject to deductions or government-mandated deductions, which we will tackle individually in a couple of seconds. So these are all based on the salary standardization, uh, standardization law and um, are supposed monthly salaries of the highest officials of the Philippines by the end of 2019. <clears throat> so again, for private companies, there, there will be a little variation. Um, a couple of things that uh, we use are, for example, is Glassdoor, so that you would have an idea how much is the basic salary for that type of job. 
also with um you can also use LinkedIn or Job Street for that. So the first salary deduct uh, deduction is uh, about withholding tax, and this is the most common one. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with this. If you have your mother or your father being employed or your ate or your kuya in a specific job, they might be talking about paying tax and sometimes how big that their taxes are. Now, the taxes have um, a specific bracket to follow. Like, for example, if your salary is 20833 and below, there will be no withholding taxes applied upon you. And that uh, follows up until a certain amount, like this 666667 and above to 200. Um, I, I'm not sure this is uh, to 200,000. Plus 35% in excess of 666,667. And then this one, 166,667 to below 666. There is a 32% um, tax in excess of over 166,667. So bottom line is that as your salary goes up, the taxes will go up as well. Okay. And this is uh, based from the recent information given in bir.gov.ph. So, yeah, here you can see that uh, this was implemented during the time of the President Duterte, uh, also applying the train law. Okay, you would have to take that into consideration. Uh, there is a revised withholding tax table effective from January 1, 2018 to December 31, 2022, which is next year. And this is basically a change in the previous um, withholding tax table uh, 2017 downwards. And of course, after 2022, we can expect for these to be higher. Okay. Now, the second deduction is SSS and GSIS. SSS is the social security system. It is a state-run social insurance program in the Philippines to workers in the private, professional, and informal sectors. SSS is established by virtue of Republic Act Number no. 1161, better known as the Social Security Act of 1954. And an employee's share in the life insurance and retirement contributions of regular members is 9% of their basic salary while the employer's share is 12% of the same. This is mandated under Section 5 of RA8291 or the GSIS. So basically, you have two um, social security systems, one for the private sector, which is SSS, and for the government, which is GSIS. Uh, its purpose is to give people um, insurance in a way and pension and other benefits, like, uh, for example, if you're a mother, you can take advantage of a maternity benefit, okay? Uh, if you are an SSS member, and of course, uh, we will all be there someday when, when somebody dies, of course, um, there will be a debt benefit that is given to the immediate estate, okay, of the member. Now, those are just a couple of um, benefits that the SSS and GSIS gives. Now, example, in terms of the deduction, if Bong's salary is 19750 and above, his contribution is 2400 Now, how this works is that 1600 is from the employer or the employer contribution, while 800 is the employee contribution. So it's like you're saving up while you are still young and you have the ability to work. Okay, And then later on, come the time of retirement or the time where you need most of the money, SSS and GSIS will be there to give you financial support. Okay, And uh, the deduction will be double for the side of the employer and 
just once for the employee. And this is the table uh, that is issued by SSS as of April 2019. Okay. So whichever your salary bracket here is, you will be able to see how much is your SSS contribution. Employee and employer contribution. The third deduction will be coming from Pag-ibig. So Pag-ibig is the Home de uh, Development Mutual Fund, more popularly known as Pag-ibig Fund. And its sole purpose is to give assistance for human settlements. Uh, while they provide uh, um, other types of loans like calamity loan, personal loan, their main uh, function is to give people assistance to have their own homes, you know, buy a house and a lot, which you will be able to pay off while you are still working, okay, for X amount of years. It depends on what type of um, loan structure you are in. And then in terms of contribution, the employee share is 3,000, oh, sorry, not uh, 2% rather, and uh, the employer share is also 2%, which makes it equal for both sides. So let's say your compensation is 1,500 below, your share is 1%, and employers is 2%, while if it's over 1,500, it's going to be 2% both sides. So regardless if your salary goes up and up, um, the, the deduction would stay the same. Fourth and last form of uh, deduction would be from the field health. So we know what uh, field health's purpose is. Uh, just a brief history, it was created in 1995 to implement universal health coverage in the Philippines. It is a tax-exempt government-owned and controlled corporation. So it is exempted from tax. And um, employed members need to pay a monthly contribution of 2.75% of their basic monthly salary. So similar to the first few deductions, as your salary goes up, your monthly con uh, contribution goes up as well. Okay, But the, the share between the employer and employee is um, split in half. Okay, So you give 150, the employer gives 150. You contribute 900 pesos, your employer contributes 900 as well. So that's how PhilHealth works. And this is the latest uh, circular uh, in terms of the rates, depending on the amount of basic salary the person has. Okay. Now, earlier we have talked about wages. Uh, sorry, salary. And we, when we said salary, it uh, refers to fixed, permanent, periodic, and subject to deductions. But wages um, are payments for manual work that are usually temporary or casual in nature. So these are your blue-collar jobs. Like, for example, you work in a construction firm as uh, a mason or... A member of the construction crew okay so your work is at a per hour basis okay the wages can vary depending on hours work and the performance so wages typically don't have government mandated deduction so the difference between the wage and the salary primarily apart from uh, being periodic fixed is that the wages are not subjected to government-mandated deduction because you work uh, temporarily and your work will be depending on the number of hours per day your employer allows you or you are capable of or the project is um, scheduled for. Okay, So it is in a per-hour basis. Like for example, your wage is 150 per hour. So it's going to be number of hours times rate per hour. So 150 times 4 hours is equals to 600. So for the day, your wage is going to be 600 pesos. Now, here are the rates for overtime work in the Philippines. And this applies to um, 
most particularly in salaries, okay? So normal workday is 125% of your hourly rate, okay? If, let's say, on a normal day, you are asked by your boss to render an hour overtime, then it's going to be 125% of your hourly rate, okay? Now, for if you would work on a rest day, a special non-working holiday, a regular holiday, and all of these combinations, you are about to get 130% of your hourly rate. Like for example, you are on your supposed rest day, but your boss asks you to report because there is a problem in the staffing. Somebody um, wasn't able to report because of um, emergency situation. Okay, They got hit by COVID. Okay, They got sick or for whatever reason there might be. So you will now work for the next eight hours at 130% hourly rate. That's why he, a lot of people would um, conveniently take rest day overtimes because of the amount of compensation you will be getting. So night shift is 110% of your overtime hourly rate based on the night shift column. So this applies for your uh, workers, uh, particularly in the BPO or if you're a security guard, or any type of work that is done at the nighttime. Uh, also, our medical frontliners, the nurses, the doctors, who are working at the night shift. Okay. So to compute for overtime, for example, um, this is at a per hour basis. Let's say workers, worker A's rate is 150 per hour and um, is requested to put an hour overtime. So simply, it's just going to be 150 times 125%. Therefore, the overtime rate, uh, pay is going to be 187.5. So that's going to be your overtime pay. Now, what if worker A works on a rest day for eight hours? Now, this is going to be different because you will now be given 130% of your hourly rate. Let's say 150 is your hourly rate. It's going to be multiplied to 130. Then you will get 195 pesos per hour. And you multiply that with the number of hours on the, sh uh, on the shift. Therefore, you will be getting 1,560 for that day. Now for your assignment, you can answer this uh, questions. And if you would need answers to this you can uh, message me on any of the social media um, platforms i am in and i have a lot of uh, business math lectures uh, they are all conveniently placed in a um, playlist you might want to check and uh, for more videos like this other business topics discussions or if you might be interested in toys uh, please hit that subscribe button and check out all of my playlists. Now that's it. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next video.